Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky's strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. When you buy a pack of cigarettes, are you sure they're going to be really fresh? You can be if your cigarette is Lucky Strike. And one big reason why is the carefully controlled moisture content of Lucky's fine tobacco. The makers of Lucky's know that if the tobacco is too moist, your cigarette will burn too slowly. Or if it's not moist enough, will taste dry. So Lucky's moisture content is constantly checked during every step of their manufacture. That's important, friends, because smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Why? First of all, because they're made of fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. Who doesn't know that LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco? And then Lucky's are made better to taste better. So, friends, if you want your next cigarette and everyone after it, to taste better, be happy, go lucky. Ask for a carton of better tasting Lucky Strike. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Murray Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Doc Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, around this time of the year, an annual activity takes place in homes throughout the country. Spring cleaning. As we go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, we find Rochester busy with this chore and his friend Roy helping him with the work. You take the bottom and I'll take the top, Roy. I got it, Rochester. Uh, where shall we carry it? Out in the yard? No, Mr. Benny might see it there and make us bring it back in. Let's carry it over here. Okay. There. Now, let's put it in the fireplace and burn it. Okay. Man, Mr. Benny sure hates to turn loose of his Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. How long did he keep the one from 1952? This is it. <laughs> I better set a match to it. Now, let's get back to the dusting and cleaning. Okay. Say, Rochester, this is the first time I've seen you since you came back from New York. Did you have a good time there? <laughs> Man, I sure envy you. Going to New York, seeing Broadway with all those wonderful shows. Did you see Tea and Sympathy? Huh? Did you see tea and sympathy? My friend, when I go to New York, I'm not looking for either. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Mm, the piano needs dusting. I'll do it. Say, Rochester, Mr. Benny's violin is on the piano. Shall I dust that, too? Well, I don't know. Do you think you might drop it? Of course not. Then let me dust it. <laughs> Rochester, maybe Mr. Benny doesn't play so good, but you shouldn't take it out on the violin. It might be valuable. It could be a Stradivarius or a Guarnerius. Do you know what kind it is? No, how can you tell? Well, the maker's name's always on the inside of the violin. You can see it by looking through these holes. Let me see. Yep, there it is. What does it say? The Pep Boys. <laughs> Uh, good morning, Rochester. Uh, good morning, boss. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Roy. How'd you sleep, boss? Oh, pretty good. Is my breakfast ready yet, Rochester? I'll go fix it now. You know, I'd like something a little different this morning. I was planning something different. I'll fix you some eggs, Benedict Canyon. 
<laughs> you mean Eggs Benedict. I mean Benedict Canyon. The grocery truck had a wreck there this morning. <laughs> Good. I'll go fix your breakfast. Say, Roy, you and Rochester really have the place looking spick and span. Oh, thank you, Mr. Benny. Hmm, the front door. Excuse me, Roy. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Come on in. Thank you. I came to say goodbye. I'm joining the Air Force. The Air Force? Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Dennis, look. Here they come, zooming to meet our thunder. Dennis. Adam, boys, give her the gun. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, for heaven's sake. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, what was that? I broke the sound barrier. Look, Dennis, why this sudden decision to join the Air Force? Well, yesterday I was walking down the street and I saw one of those posters with the finger pointing at it and said, Uncle Sam needs me. Oh, he does, eh? Well, Dennis, if our armed forces are in such bad shape that Uncle Sam needs you, I'm moving to Tasmania. <laughs> now, while I'm packing, let me hear the song you're going to do on next Sunday's show. Yes, sir. Possible schemes. You can laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams. And life gets more exciting with each passing day. And love is either in your heart or on the way. Don't you know that it's worth every treasure on earth? To be young at heart Or as rich as you are It's much better by far To be young at heart And if you should survive To a hundred and five Look at all you'll derive Out of being alive the best part you have a head start if you are among the very young at heart if you are among the very that usually I'm so busy that I haven't got time to compliment you on your singing, but you have, without a doubt, one of the finest voices that I've ever heard. Hurry up, I gotta get down to the recruiting office. <laughs> Look, Dennis, forget about enlisting. You don't have to. Now, you did your duty during the last war when you were in the service. Yeah, you're right. I put in a couple of years in the Navy. I was on a battleship for six months, a destroyer for eight months, and a submarine for three months. Dennis, I didn't know you had submarine duty. Yeah, that was exciting. Sometimes the submarine would stay submerged for days at a time. Boy, was that tough. It was? I'll say they never let me inside. <laughs> well, I'd better go now. You're turning blue again. Goodbye. <laughs> If he should survive to 105, it won't be my fault. <laughs> Silly kid. 
Most people think I don't like him, but I love when Dennis comes over. Always makes me feel so good when he leaves. <laughs> Sometimes he does. I'll get it, Rochester. Hello? Hello. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Benny? Why, Mr. Kitson! <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, it's nice hearing from you again. What can I do for you? Nothing. This time I want to do something for you. Oh. I want to invite you to me and my wife's wedding anniversary party Saturday night. Oh, so you and your wife are celebrating your wedding anniversary. Which one is it? The 13th. Number 13. Isn't that unlucky? Mm, what was so fortunate about the other 12? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'll be glad to come to your party, Mr. Kitzel. Wonderful. And Mr. Benny, it's going to be a masquerade. Everybody is supposed to come as a famous movie star. Oh, that's a cute idea. Uh, who are you coming as, Mr. Kitzel? William Holden. Oh! I see, because he won the Academy Award. Uh huh. And my wife is coming as Audrey Hepburn. Oh, does your wife look like Audrey Hepburn? No, William Holden. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, who's, who's going to be at the party, Mr. Kitzel? Well, let me see. There's you and me and two more of my friends. My wife and her immediate family, 60 people in all. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, your wife has that many relatives living here? Oh, no, they're coming from Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Minneapolis, New York, Oklahoma, Philadelphia, and Boston. All that distance just to come to a party. Two of them are coming in from Tasmania. <laughs> no. Yes, Tom DeLeo and Irving. <laughs> Lay open her. <laughs> well, it certainly sounds like a lot of fun, and I'll be there. Thank you very much, Mr. Kitts. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Kitts. Yeah, it's a cute idea having a masquerade party, and everybody comes as a famous movie star. I wonder if it would be hammy if I came as me. <laughs> Oh, well, I better go in and eat. Say, that breakfast looks good, Rochester. I kept everything hot for you. Oh, that's fine. Well, I'll say goodbye now, Rochester. We're all done. That's right. Thanks for helping me, Roy. Oh, wait a minute, Roy. I'd like to give you some money for coming over and helping out. Oh, that isn't necessary, Mr. Benny. No, no, Roy. I want to give you something. What do you think is fair? Well, I don't know. Let me see. You came over here at 8 this morning. It's noon now. That's four hours. What would you say to three dollars? Three dollars? Well, uh, do you think that's fair, Rochester? No, but grab it. <laughs> All right, here's five dollars, Roy. Oh, thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. So long, Rochester. Rochester, I want to ask you something. What business is it of yours how much money Roy gets? Mr. Benny, when you make as little as I do, you've got to borrow from somebody. <laughs> well, in the future, Rochester, I wish... Hmm. You, you finish your breakfast. I'll see who it is. Okay. Coming, coming! Oh, hello, Mr. Wilson. Ah, oh, hello, Rochester. Come on in, boys. Oh, I see you got the sportsman quartet with you. Hello, gentlemen. Mm. Mr. Benny's having his breakfast. I'll tell him you're here. Oh, no, 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 Rochester. I, I want to see you, not him. Me? Yeah, let's all go in the living room where the piano is. Uh, look, Rochester, we want to surprise Mr. Benny on next Sunday's show, and we have an idea for the commercial. And we want you to sing with the quartet. You can sing, can't you? Anything but soprano. Uh, let me see the music. There you are. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I, I think I can handle this. Uh, let's have a go at it, shall we? One, two. 
Oh, baby, my. I get so lonely when I dream about you. Can't do without you. That's why I dream about you. If I could only put my arms about you, life would be so fair. If you were there, we two could hug and kiss and never tire. I'm on fire. You are my one desire. So I get so lonely when I dream about you. Why can't you be there? Oh, Rochester. Yes, yes. Oh, Rochester. I'm here. This is the spot. So, so. For you know what. Well, here's a thought. When I get lonely, I just find a lucky. From old Kentucky, a better taste than lucky. A lucky strike is made of fine tobacco. <laughs> it's the smoke I love. Oh, baby, mine. And don't forget that he's got smoke and pleasure. A smoke and pleasure. Jack will love it when we do it on the show. I hope so, Mr. Wilson. Well, we better be running along. So long, Rochester. Goodbye, Mr. Wilson. So long, fellas. Oh, Rochester. Yes, sir. If there are any phone calls for me, I'll be in the library. I'm going to read for a while. Yes, sir. Gee, I haven't read a good book in a long time. Look at the ones on this shelf. They've all been made into great pictures. Kane Mutiny by Herman Woke. The High and the Mighty by Ernest Gann. From Here to Eternity by James Jones. From Here to Tijuana by Ali Khan. <laughs> Let's see what else I have. It Takes All Kinds by Marie Zolito. Oh, look, here's that new book that Frank Remley wrote about the orchestra. The Seagram's Around Us. <laughs> Say, here's a new one that looks interesting. The Secrets of a Psychiatrist. I think I'll read this one. I better move that lamp over here. There we are. Now, let's see. The Secrets of a Psychiatrist. Chapter One. My name is Dr. William Jackson. Ph.D., B.A., L.L.B., M.A., B.S., M.D. <laughs> yes, my last name is Fitbalison. <laughs> <laughs> I majored in psychiatry in medical school and was one of the country's most successful psychiatrists. Thanks to all you crazy mixed up kids. <laughs> However, I'm no longer wealthy and successful because one day, but I'm getting ahead of my story. It all started normally enough one day last spring when my nurse came into my office. Excuse me, doctor. Yes, nurse. Mr. Jones is waiting outside to see you. Which Mr. Jones? The one who goes around with an onion on his head because he thinks he's a pickled herring? <laughs> no, no, doctor. The one who thinks he's a refrigerator. Oh, well, send him in. 
And get me my dark glasses. Every time he opens his mouth, that light inside hurts my eye. <laughs> now, please hurry. I have a busy schedule. Yes, doctor. You may go in now, Mr. Jones. Hello, Mr. Jones. Ah, uh, hello, doctor. Well, Mr. Jones, do you still think you're a refrigerator? Yeah. Now, don't worry, Mr. Jones. I'll cure you. I want you to go home and sit in a corner and say to yourself, I'm a man. I'm a man. Until you're positive you are not a refrigerator. But, doctor, I know I'm a refrigerator. How can you be so positive? You can be sure when you're a Westinghouse. <laughs> Oh, well, you certainly fooled me. With that uniform on, I thought you were General Electric. Apparently, he didn't like my joke because he left my office, closing both doors behind him, mine and his. <laughs> the rest of the afternoon was rather uneventful. However, I did have one other interesting case. It was a musician, a drummer named Sammy. This poor fellow believed he was a St. Bernard. He always tied a keg of brandy around his neck and went out looking for people lost in the snow. This in itself wasn't so bad, but when he found them, he would rob them and drink the brandy to celebrate. <laughs> it was rather difficult to understand why Sammy thought he was a St. Bernard. He looked more like a Mexican hairless. <laughs> After he left, my nurse came into the office once more. Are there any more patients, Miss Mitchell? No, doctor. Uh, do you mind if I leave for the day? No, you may go. Oh, just a minute. Yes, sir? Miss Mitchell, I want you to know that you've been a great help to me. I'd never have gotten where I am without you. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. How long have you been with me? Seven years. And what am I paying you now? A dollar an hour in car fare. <laughs> Gee, that's not very much. It is when you consider I live in Tasmania. <laughs> It was at this moment that I made up my mind to marry her. I proposed to her immediately, but our wedding had to be postponed because I received an urgent call to fly to Mexico and see a patient who was badly in need of my services. I flew down there, arriving late in the evening. I stopped in at a restaurant and had a dinner consisting of chili con carne, enchiladas, tacos, tortillas, and red peppers, which I washed down with a big glass of tequila. <laughs> then I went to my hotel room and fell into a sound sleep, which was marred only when I snored and set the drapes on fire. <laughs> the following morning, I went to see my Mexican patient. This was a simple case. The man was overworked and needed fresh air and exercise. I recommended that he go horseback riding, and three days later, he returned. Have you taken my advice? Si. <laughs> you've gone horseback riding every day? Si. And you've been riding 10 hours every day? Si. How do you feel now? Sore. <laughs> Sore? Si. <laughs> I went back to Los Angeles, sadly realizing I had failed and there was nothing I could do for this patient who was obviously crazy with the heat. He would have been much better off had he remained a refrigerator. As soon as I got back, Miss Mitchell and I set our wedding date for the following Saturday. Are you happy, dear? Oh, yes. Just think on Saturday, I will become Mrs. William Jackson, Ph.D., B.A., L.L.B., M.A., B.S., M.D. Darling, that's pronounced pit <laughs> And so we made our preparations, and I was blissfully happy. The morning before the wedding, I was at my office getting things ready for my departure, when suddenly the door opened, and she walked in. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. She was beautiful. From outward appearance,
appearances, you never could tell that she was a dancer in a burlesque show. <laughs> she looked so demure, hiding behind that balloon. <laughs> After a few seconds, she smiled nervously at me and said, Doctor, put down that pin. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> now tell me, what seems to be your trouble? Well, my husband is away for long periods of time, and I get so lonely. Oh, baby mine. Doctor, doctor, isn't there anything you can do to help me? Well, I'm getting married at seven o'clock tonight. Oh. I'll pick you up at a quarter to eight. <laughs> but doctor. What about your honeymoon, your wife? Oh, she'll make out all right. I give her a dollar an hour in car fare. <laughs> now, supposing we... Aha! I thought I'd catch you here. My goodness, it's my husband. But he's wearing a uniform. I'm General Electric. <laughs> he was a stupid kid, but that made no difference. I was in love with his wife, a married woman. The newspapers printed the story. My nurse broke our engagement and left me. My patients deserted me. I lost all my money. Then the medical society stepped in and took away my Ph.D., B.A., L.L.B., M.A., B.S., M.D. And I wound up William Jackson. Or just plain Bill. <laughs> that is my story. The Secrets of a Psychiatrist. <laughs> Friends, it's alarming to think that a destructive fire starts every minute of the day and night. There's no end in sight for the terrible destruction caused by these fires unless you do something about it. Here's what you can do. Check all of the electrical equipment in your home. Make certain it is safe. Don't smoke in bed. Be sure that every match, every cigarette is out before you retire for the night. Don't give fire a place to start. Thank you. Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, a word to cigarette smokers. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. You know, it almost goes without saying, friends. One reason you smoke is for enjoyment. And that enjoyment comes from the taste of your cigarette. That's right. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. And why not? Better taste starts with fine tobacco. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. Fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. And then Lucky's are made to taste better carefully made with a constant check on quality during every step in their manufacture. That's why you can be sure that every Lucky you light is round and firm and fully packed to draw freely, smoke evenly, and naturally taste better. So remember, friends, when you're looking for smoking enjoyment, the sure way to find it is to reach for a Lucky, because smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact is, Lucky's taste better, cleaner, Fresher, smoother. So try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Good night, folks. We're a little late. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Joseph Burke, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. And KNX AM and FM Los Angeles, where 10 o'clock wire is heard every night of the week.